Hello and welcome to another reading vlog. I have already read a bunch of books this week and I'm just going to get straight into them. I'm going to start with one of the better ones. Why not start with something sweet and fun? And that is <laughs> Adventure Time with Fiona and Cake. This is fantastic. I'll just flip through a few of the pages so you can see the illustration style. It is very fun. If you watch the television series, it's pretty much like watching an episode. So the illustrations are beautiful and it was just very nostalgic for me. So Adventure Time, the series has come to an end. Fiona and Cake, the new series, is still going. In this particular book, I really loved my favourite parts were about a lumpy space prince being so beautiful. Oh my god, I am gorgeous. And the fire kitties, I thought they were delightful. So this was just a really fun time. I've given it four and a half stars because I just love Adventure Time. No, Blue, do not jump onto the tripod and it's just it just uh, appeals to my inner child pretty much so love this it's okay blue's chilled out now <laughs> next to sylvie so the next book that i picked up is the premonition by banana yoshimoto i i know it is <laughs> translated japanese fiction which i have an issue with in terms of the writing it just feels very cold and removed and distant and yes, that was the case. So I just put the writing style out of my brain and just try to enjoy the story. I grabbed it because the cover is just beautiful. It's pink and green and black and it appealed to me. So I thought I'd give it a go. It's such a short story. Um, <laughs> I've given this a two. So writing aside, this book is real weird. So that the pacing was just off, that the narrative flow of the story was really weird. And the ro the romance elements in this and <laughs> Nabra. Uh, they were both taboo, so both relationships in this. One of them is a female teacher with her younger male student, and the other is um, incest adjacent. I'll just say it like that. So it's not incest, but it feels like incest. So I'm not a fan of this whatsoever. The story itself just wasn't interesting. It had like an almost thrillery kind of feel to it. There was this edge of, is there something sinister? The only sinister thing in this was the romantic relationships. So yeah, this just definitely wasn't my kind of story and I will not be reading more from this author. Yeah, I have yet to find a translated Japanese fiction that I'd really enjoy, just have not found it. So this was the premonition. And those are the only books that I have read thus far. Currently I'm reading a few, so I started a few. On my e-reader I am reading The Fury by Alex Migalithers and I love the cover with the Greek eye with a Greek evil eye a juxta imposed upon the, I guess, Greek island backdrop. It's cool. And this is a thriller. And what I've ascertained thus far is a group of friends, one of them being an ex-Hollywood star, go to an island. One of them is killed and they're all suspects in the murder. So this one breaks the fourth wall in that one of the characters is talking directly to yo and i don't know if i like that yeah they're very colloquial in in their in their speech towards you like your old chums and yeah I, I am yet undecided whether that's a kind of technique i enjoy or not so we'll see how we go i'm only a couple of chapters in but so far it's not offensive the next book i'm picking up um i'm picking up a middle grade after my run with dark romances i just need some wholesomeness <laughs> in my life something very childlike and uh, not abusive. So we've got Tamora and the Word Snatcher by Kate Gordon. My daughter picked this up at her school book fair. So it says that you've got an 11 year old who lives in a world that she doesn't really fit and books help her find other worlds where she belongs. But then on her 12th birthday, she makes a wish and that wish alters her life forever. So we'll see what it's like. The cover's not giving me anything to be honest. I'll say, I asked my daughter, what drew you to this? And she said, the cover. I'm like, really? <laughs> it's like a shadow figure with just some blue and green and a stag-like creature in a book. I don't know, this cover doesn't do anything for me. It's got the spot gloss, which is nice. But yeah, she was drawn to this, so we'll see how this goes. And the next book I picked up was Sugar Baby by Celine St. Clair. I was drawn in by the cover. I like the pink silk and satin and feminist, feminine vibes on here. So it says Agnes Green is turning 21 and her life is heading nowhere. So she's a cleaner and she ends up cleaning this sugar baby's house. And a sugar baby is someone who basically their job is just to be with a rich person in various ways. And that rich person will buy them things and give them things and sort of give them a 
bit of a luxe lifestyle and I think she ends up trying to be a sugar baby. So Agnes herself is a black woman, I believe. But it's basically how far will she go to be adored? So we'll see how this goes. This is a lip fic book. I think the other book that I'm going to pick up for this reading vlog is, I think it's called something like When the Moon Hangs. I don't know what it's called, but this just came in. I think this is a brand new release and uh, a lot of people are raving about it. Uh, so I thought I'll give that one a go as well. So those are the, the main four that are on the slot for this vlog. But besides that, I am heading out again today to take my daughter and more of her friends shopping. And I'll probably grab lunch at the mall, hopefully somewhere decent, not in the food court. I don't know how people can eat in food courts, just the noise and all the smells. I can't eat. <laughs> I, can't, I cannot digest food in a situation like that. So I'll try and find some kind of enclosed restaurant because they do have those there. But I will check in with you guys once I have done some more reading. Okay, so I've read some more books. Let me tell you what I have read. So the next book that I picked up was The Fury by Alex Michalides. And this is basically The Glass Onion. It's the same thing. So if you've seen The Glass Onion, you will predict every single twist. You will know who the killer is. You will see what's coming. There are no surprises. It's an inner thriller. That's pretty disappointing when you aren't shocked by anything. So naturally, like the last onion, you have an unreliable narrator. You've got a person who is telling the story. He's very annoying. He's talking directly to you and he's not very likable. So it kind of sucks that he was the main narrator. So basically you have this ex-Hollywood mega rich woman and she and a bunch of her mooch leech friends are going with her to her Greek island home which naturally doesn't have anybody except them on it. She's murdered and it's a whole who done it? Which one of her friends who all have motives to kill her did it? Uh, AKA the glass onion. So because of that like I said everything was predictable and I wasn't shocked not one little bit. This is one of those books which at the end of every chapter they just went ham on the foreshadowing. If only I knew but that was the last thing that she said, like just the, the constant ominous tones at the end of every chapter. And I'm like, this isn't, this isn't setting up atmosphere. This is very annoying. <laughs> it's very repetitive. The best part of this book was the, the setting, the place, being on, on an island in Greece. I think the wind was also a main theme in the book. And the cover was lovely. I love the Greek eye imposed upon the Greek island. I think it's a very pretty cover, but pretty much what I was feeling at the end of this book was fury for having wasted my time. This just did absolutely nothing for me. The only likable character was the Greek lady, and I've already forgotten her name because she doesn't have much to say. <laughs> I guess that's why she's so likable. She's quite quiet. <laughs> yes, so the fury I have given a three star, very basic. The next book I read was Sugar Baby, and I've given this a 3.25. Basically, this is a saucy story about sex work, or in particular, sugar babies. So very attractive young women who get these men to sponsor them. Basically, these men pay them an allowance, take them out for lunch, buy them designer handbags because these ladies love their luxury bags. And in return, they normally get some kind of sexual act from the ladies. Not always. Sometimes it's just having their pleasure of their company, but most of the time it ends up with a sex act. To be honest, this is more of a salacious, entertaining romp than a book that's making any kind of meaningful commentary about sex work or religion or race or substance abuse. So don't go in there expecting something groundbreaking or pivotal or poignant. It's just an entertaining read. The main character herself, not a lot of character growth happens. So also... <laughs> Don't expect that happening. You're just going along with her while she goes from being a house cleaner, making zero dollars to suddenly being able to afford everything she wants and carrying around Chanel flap handbags. It is a very easy to read book. I think it is a lot of pages, but you just, you breeze right through it because there's, there's nothing sort of intense or intricate about the writing. It's very simple and it's, it's all the plot that is just moving you all the way through. Just let's go and see who her next sugar daddy is. 
The next book I picked up was Tamora and the Word Snatcher. So this is a middle grade book. I would probably give it a three stars and that's being a bit generous. It's kind of like the page master, but with a lot more birds. For a middle grade book, the world building was very confusing. I still don't quite understand the magic system or the world building whatsoever. It is to do with sort of people living in books and being taken out of books and uh, I think they called him her the word spinner. It was, like I said, very confusing. I don't really have a grasp on it. But the whole premise of the story is words have power and you can write your own story. But for me personally, I was kind of a bit bored and just trying to get through it and I won't be continuing on with the series. The next book I read was the Delegate Dream Department Store. I personally love the cover. I think it was so fun and eye-catching. Both of my kids though were like, that's a two out of five. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got rainbows and bright colors, but they weren't feeling it. So this is Korean translated fiction. And unfortunately, the same thing that happens with a lot of translated fiction for me happened with this in that the writing feels very simplistic, like it's been boiled down and reduced just to the functionality of the story and all of like the magicalness and the beauty of it is stripped away. So it's very simple writing. It's very slow paced for such a fantastical book. It's quite dull. It reminds me of Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Stop. Stop. Not cool. Not consenting. When Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium and the Toys movie combined, but about dreams. That's the, the feeling of this book. However, the once again, the world building is very confusing. I, I didn't quite understand what's going on. What's the rules of this world? Are they... Is there a normal world? And then this is like a dream world that people go to when they fall asleep. Like, what's the universe? It's not really explained. I did DNF it at halfway through. Um, so maybe that does get explained and therefore my point is moot. But there was just no depth to the characters. The interactions were very stilted and everything was like skimmed over, including the dreams that all of these people were having. You weren't really told, like what did they actually really dream about? Everything was just rushed along and there was no depth to it. It was all very surface level. And I wasn't enthralled in the story, connected to the characters, didn't really care what was going to happen. There was no sense of urgency or sort of any overarching plot, really. Like, they got robbed at one stage, but then that was fine. And like, yeah, there was just nothing really hitting for me with this one. So very pretty, cool idea, but just wasn't executed in a way that I found riveting or interesting enough to continue with. So that is everything that I have read this week. Until next time, stay wild, star child.